Welcome back to what will probably be the last video in this little series on uh, TV. And we've just passed 20,000 subscribers, so that's pretty good. And uh, welcome to all the new people who've just found this channel. Now, I'm going to wrap up this series and just talk a bit about some of the clients that you can use to uh, watch the, the digital TV. But first, I'll talk about this uh, computer setup because I get a lot of questions asking what I'm running here. Now, first of all, it's nothing that flash, right? I bought the hardware like over 10 years ago. It's just whatever computer was available at the time. And I've got two graphics cards. Each has three video outputs. So I've got an HDMI output, a DisplayPort output, and a DVI output. And I just feed all them to the HDMI inputs of these monitors. Now, as you can see, I've just uh, put three of them in uh, portrait uh, style. And the reason for that is it's just much easier for anything that requires text, like even looking at web pages or especially coding stuff. It's just a lot better to have it that way. But I've also got, of course, the three standard, um, we call it landscape orientation, just for things like for video and chat windows and stuff like that. So I've got a good mix of the two of them. The monitors, they would be the cheapest thing on the market as well that I could find. I don't even know what they are, the BenQ something. And they're actually quite small because once you put them in portrait like this, you don't want a really excessively huge monitor to sit that way. So it fits there, it does the job. And um, I'm pretty used to having six monitors now. So when I have to use like two or three, yeah, it's a bit difficult, but I manage because I'm good like that. Okay, so if I wanted to make a short version of this video and talk about um, the clients to watch the TV, I would just say use VLC and thanks for coming. Okay, VLC is by far the best client I've found because it, it runs anything. I'm sure you've all seen it. And if you want to record something, you can just press record on it and it'll, it'll just save it to a file. So you can't beat that. Now, if we're talking about standalone clients to use without having a computer running VLC, I'm going to recommend uh, a Raspberry Pi with Kodi because obviously that's designed for watching media. So I'll go through uh, one of the setups that I've got running that. Here I've got Kodi running on a Raspberry Pi. Now this is a Raspberry Pi 3 and primarily I'm using UDP as you know from the multicast TV server. And it works fine for the most part except for the high def channels. Now if I have a look just here's a standard uh, definition uh, UDP stream and if I have a look at the um, bandwidth you can see it's not that bad and obviously it runs fine on the, on the screen here. Now, if I try to run one of the high-def UDP streams, it struggles. It can't do it. You can get some of it through, but you see a lot of errors, okay? On the Raspberry Pi, which is just a Linux box, you can see UDP by going cat uh, procnet UDP, and you can see what's actually running as far as UDP goes. Now, I've got a standard definition TV station playing at the moment, and the IP address is in hex but I know it's this one here. So if I look at that, and you can look that up in a uh, hex converter here, and you'll see backwards, but 239.1.1.32, that's the multicast group for the uh, standard deaf TV station that's currently playing. And you can see it's fine. Now in this column over here, the drops, it's all zero. Okay, so there's no drops and the picture's fine. Now if I put that on a UDP high definition channel, then we start seeing drops coming in and we see errors on the screen. Now I've got it set up trying to play a high def multicast stream and you can see there's some errors on the screen. Now if we go back and have a look, we can see that for the multicast group I'm looking at now, we now have dropped frames. And you can just watch that every second and see the dropped frames going up sometimes. I mean sometimes it works for a little bit, but ultimately it's not stable. So there's a bit of a problem with the Raspberry Pi uh, playing high def uh, multicast streams. The way around that is simply just to watch the high def ones as TCP. Like I showed in the last video, you can convert it to TCP and it seems to be able to handle them okay. If you want to make some shortcuts that you can just click on in Kodi to open a network stream, the way I've done it is I've put them all in a directory called TV and you just make the files for each channel with .strm on the end for the stream. So an example of what's in them is just RTP and then the multicast group. And that gives you something to click on and it just opens the stream. And you can do the same for uh, TCP for the high definition channels to avoid the errors that we saw. One thing I didn't mention when I talked about setting up the multicast TV server 
was the EPG, the Electronic Program Guide. Now, I gave a command like this to run it, which just runs the program, sets the frequency, you know, finds the config file for the channels you want to stream, and the tuning parameters. Now, that works fine, but if you put dash E on the end of it, you will also stream out the EPG data, and that comes in useful. So, it's worth putting that on there as well. So, now when you watch a TV station, you can see at the top it has the uh, program name. And if you go to Tools and Program Guide, you'll see that it pulls in the data for quite a while ahead. Well, it does around here anyway. Okay, so that's, that's why VLC is just the supreme client because it has all this stuff. Okay, and if you go to another station, just click the next one here, the program guide will come in. It comes in every now and again. You'll get the initial ones, and then if you wait a bit, the rest will come in in one go. Now, you can get a program to do it directly on Linux and just dump the EPG data, but really, this is where you'd use it anyway. So, you can just click on it and see what's what. Here, I've got a Raspberry Pi just behind an amplifier in the uh, room where the piano is, and I listened to one of the radio stations, SBS Chill, because it's uh, very mellow, I don't have to see anything, and it's just nice to have on in the background. Okay, so there it is. Everything I wanted to share with you about uh, TV from over the air, over a network, over Wi-Fi, all of that. Now, a bit of a plot twist here is that I don't actually watch TV at all. I never watch it, and just making this uh, series here, when I have had to look at a bit of this, it, it just reminds me why I don't watch it. Right? I just can't stand it. I do, however, listen to radio SBS Chill, and I just have that on the background, as you heard before, because it is quite good. But I will always have a TV server set up like I do because it's good for testing things. If I want to test um, high bandwidth video or QoS for video or the Wi-Fi, all that sort of stuff, it's handy to have. Now, I'm sorry I couldn't help the people in America who use a different standard, but you know that's what you get for using a different standard. If anyone knows how to do similar with the American system, I'd, I'd be keen, again, just because I like knowing how things work. If anyone wants to share that um, with me, that'd be good. So anyway, there it is. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you next time.